Hi, it's Milton Shoup. Welcome back. This is GMAX 1.2 for the beginning modeler, video number 33, build and animate the gear parts. I think we'll wrap up this uh, three-part series in this video. <clears throat> in the previous uh, two sessions, we started constructing the main gear here. We started with a cylinder object. This one is way too heavy. You only need about 10 or 12 sides for this, and it will look just fine in the sim. We construct, constructed this, you know, shaped all of this with extrudes and what have you, and uh, <clears throat> followed that by constructing the uh, lower part of gear, the oleo section, and linking it to the upper part of the gear. And then we constructed the axle linked it to the lower gear and then the last video we constructed the wheel and tire and linked it to the axle so we had the top down structure and then we followed up by <coughs> showing you how to animate the uh, upper gear from frame 0 to 100 for extension and retraction. We start <coughs> gear animations in the in all most all animations at uh, keyframe zero <coughs> and that's the way the aircraft would be in flight. So that's the way animations start with the gear retracted. And then uh, gear is animated to keyframe 100 and that's where the gear comes down. We're sitting in a hanging position as if we're preparing uh, a landing configuration. And then in frames 101 to 200, we animate we animated the lower gear that shows the oleo suspension working. Okay, and that's kind of where we wrapped up last video. <clears throat> and now in this video, we just want to finish off the gear. So we've added the retractor bar, the pivot bar up in the nacelle, or in this case, the boom. And we're going to uh, add the uh, torque links and animate uh, these three objects. So all I did to create uh, these parts was uh, use a box, standard box, uh, with no seg no cross segments, and then just used uh, chamfer to round the corners on these edges on each end. And oops, same thing with the uh, torque links. You can see where I chamfered the ends to make it give it a rounded appearance. And from 20, 30 feet away, they're going to look very rounded. Get out here, you're going to see. They're going to look pretty rounded, so no problem there. That's really all the detail you need in them. And if you look at these torque links from the top, this is typically the way they're shaped. Uh, and they tie into each other kind of side by side through a pin, with a pin through them. So that's what we did there. <coughs> Yeah, I just did this uh, prior to the video just to save time and sizing, shaping, and proportioning, but uh, very simple. Just four-sided box, chamfer the ends, get them in position, shape them up a little bit with the vertice <coughs> sub-object mode, vertex sub-object mode. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, I created... Uh, some six-sided six cylinders just to act as bolts for the attach points here. And then once once I did that, let's see, let's go to the left side. Um, once I did that, I uh, set the pivots for each. Let's see, back pivot only. To put the pivots for each of the bars at the pin or at the rotation point in preparation for... Uh, let's hide the tire here so we can see uh, what's going on. 
So I set the upper pivot at this uh, rotation point and linked it to the upper gear because we want that to stick with the upper gear. And then the lower one, set the pivot down at its pivot point, rotation point, and I link that to the lower gear because it's going to follow the lower gear. Basically the same thing up here. Set the pivot at the pin at the rotation point, linked it to the upper gear, and we'll, we'll animate this as well. So that's basically all there is to, to uh, finishing this off. Let's just hide uh, that main gear that we use for reference so that we can look at this without uh, the interference. So th the task today is uh, once you've built the scissor links or the torque links and link them to the appropriate parents, shape them and what have you, set the pivot points and the retractor bar, then all we need to do is animate this and uh, we'll show you how to do that. So <clears throat> remember that suspension animation is animated from frames 101 to 200. So we're going to start at 101 and add our animation keys. Go up to the animation command panel. We're going to add a rotation key at 101. We're going to go to 200 and add a position key. And remember these keys are what GMAX used, uses to store information about what that part is doing. It's really storing information about this pivot, what it's doing, how much it turns, how much it moves, what have you. So we have to do that for the upper torque link, the lower torque link. So we've got it set for here. Let's go ahead while we're setting these things and do it for the lower one. We'll set a rotation uh, key. We'll set a position key at 200. Then we come back to 101 and we're ready to animate. So <clears throat> let's uh, just start with the one we're on here and click the animate button. Now we're saying, GMAX, I'm ready for you to record what I'm fixing to do here. Sorry about that fixing, that's Texas talk. Okay, so we're going to move this to keyframe 200. Then we're going to rotate this using the local coordinate. And we're going to rotate it. We have to kind of, in our mind's eye, assume that both of these are going to meet up somewhere in the middle between these two points. So we're just going to rotate this down by grabbing that pivot. And this is when the gear is fully compressed. So, I mean, it takes a pretty hard landing to fully compress it. So we don't normally see it this way in the sim because we if we're going to hard landing we're probably not in spot view we're probably somewhere else so, okay so that that's done you can see we've got the movement we want and it comes back to the home position there so now let's go back to 101 select the upper torque link and click the animate key and we're going to run it over to 200 then we're going to rotate this up to meet the other one. Let's see if we're on it a little bit more. Right there. Okay, and that's it. So let's see how that looks when we pull it back here. Okay, we got a little separation there. Right there. They do ultimately come back together. So, how do we fix that? Simple. Let's go find out where the separation is starting to happen. About 120, 130. Let's try just going to 150 and we're going to add a position key for that. We're going to select the other one and we're going to add a position key for there. Now let's go back and redo the animation. It just takes a couple of uh, iterations and you'll get this locked in. So we're on 150. We're going to pull this down to 
to about there because we're going to rotate the other one up a little. Okay, so we got that one set. Now let's go focus on the other one and see if we can get them to meet in the middle, if you will. Okay, we got that. Now let's see what we got. We still got a little. You're going to have a little. It's not a big deal. It's not going to be noticeable. But we want it to be looking good. When you're sitting static in the sim, you're going to be in this 150 to 170 area. So this is going to be kind of where it's going to operate. So you want it to be as right as right can be right here. So that's really not. I'd say it's pretty close. I think we're good to go there. But you get the idea. That's how we animate those scissor links. So the top one to the top gear part. The bottom one to the lower gear, the oleo part. And that's where we link them. And that's how it looks when you animate it. Alright, and we need to do something similar here on the retraction. Of course, that's going to happen 0 to 100. So, we're going to uh, start the animation setup here. We'll rotate at 0. And we're going to go until 100. So, what you have to kind of strange animating, it kind of seems backwards animating it this way, but that's the way it works. So we're going to, first of all, we're going to rotate this. Let's see how I want to do this. Yeah. Okay, we're going to rotate this to start back this way, something like that. And then we're going to pull it down, and then we're going to rotate this up, back up into the. And until we get it, okay, if you can, in your mind's eye, think about the uh, retraction mechanism up here pulling this uh, rearward to, uh, to retract the gear. That's kind of what's going on there. Something like that. Most of this is up in the uh, either the nacelle or in our case the boom. <coughs> the nacelle part of the boom if you will. So you're only going to see just a few frames of this before it disappears. So. But that gives you an idea of what's going on. Now could it be going the other way? I suppose. I don't have any kind of drawings or anything to indicate exactly how this retraction occurs. But So we'll just presume it's that way. We'll take some artist license here and uh, go with it. Okay, so now that we have that, let's unhide the, uh, unhide the wheel. Somewhere we have a wheel, it's all the right stuff. Let's get that out of the way. Maybe we can find it. <laughs> okay. Wheel and tire, what do we call it? There it is, left tire. <coughs> okay. So now we've got this situation. And that looks pretty darn good. Or, uh, you know, for somebody that <coughs> never put one together before, there you go. We've got a, just a functioning, nice-looking piece of gear. <coughs> and that's how you do the animations, boys and girls. That. <coughs> and just uh, some final notes here. Remember, this is a little heavy for gear. You don't get very close to gear, and these are way too many polys to be placing here when you're going to need them in other places. <coughs> um, so I would recommend, you know, 10 or 12 sides here would be finished, final, fine. <laughs> I mean, if you just, if you want to make things look really good in GMAX, you're, o you're probably overkilling because uh, when you're in the sim and you're usually seeing this 
at this kind of distance it's, it's just unnecessary to have all those sides let's uh, take off the you can see in the sim it's going to look really nice at, at that distance and I don't know what I used over on this one but it, as you can see this is uh, this is what I have in the sim that's uh, eight eight sided and that looks fine <clears throat> you wouldn't know it in the sim it looks perfect in the sim so so this is way overkill on polish the other thing is Sometimes your products just get heavy on polish. You want to make sure that you're hiding all the polish that will never be seen. And as an example, this top poly can be deleted. <coughs> the end polish can be deleted here. <coughs> These end polish can be deleted here. You can't really delete this one because you'd probably see it, but all of these end polish can be deleted. Okay, just something to keep in mind. Uh, if you look at the top of the this, uh, that top poly can be deleted. So you just have to be frugal. On the other side of the axle, that end poly can be deleted. So savings here, savings there, and and it all adds up uh, when you're going through the aircraft and putting all these parts in. Okay, so that's kind of what. Uh, the gear would look like on the first go around. Later when you texture it, you know, it's going to look pretty sharp. And uh, let's see, we've got everything linked. That's really important here. Let's see what, what's this. Uh, what did I end up leaving called a box? I see I didn't, I should have linked, called these uh, left because they have to be animated. So they have to carry the conventional name of left gear or right gear or C gear and I call this upper torque link <clears throat> now keep in mind too that uh, GMAX only allows 25 characters in a name so you have to be cognizant of that when it gets out to the end you're at 25 so <laughs> let's just uh, copy this and we'll paste this in here. Really important, as I mentioned before, to keep control of your naming conventions because they'll help you uh, manage your parts when you get up to 800 or whatever you end up with in your project. Call this lower toward link. <coughs> Let's see if everything else is cleaned up on this. We still got a box here of somewhere, something. Okay, we've got. The, uh, <clears throat> another animated part, so it has to start with left gear. I'm going to call it re uh, retractor. If that's really a word, I don't know. <laughs> All right, now, 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 how, how now do we look? Okay, it looks pretty good. Everything's linked appropriately. We've got the upper gear, the lower gear, the oleo. We got the axle, the wheel tire. And the rest of this stuff, uh, gear retractor, upper torque link, and where's the lower torque link? Oh, it's up here. No, nope, it's not. It's right here. Lower torque link and upper torque link. So we're good to go. So there you have it. Uh, we've got ourselves a bang up piece of main gear here. And <clears throat> obviously the next question is how do we get it from one side to the other? just like we did with the wing, just like we did with the flaps, just like we did with the boom. We, uh, <coughs> we select it all and clone it. And it takes the uh, top, if you're selecting this, and it's it takes the, the uh, top uh, top of the hierarchy, the parent, and uh, when it does the clone, so you can rename that. Of course, it's not going to rename all your lower parts, and you'll want to change them. Uh, that's important, so you need to take the time to go through and change all your lefts to rights. <clears throat> and then, um, once you have that cloned, go back and select only the uh, right gear upper. And uh, 
we haven't moved this into position to the to the uh, left side yet. We're in the build position, which is on the grid. So no sense kind of move, trying to move it to the other side. But <clears throat> when you uh, are cloning and mirroring things that are symmetric, you can take it straight over. You don't have to worry about mirroring those parts. The things like the wheel and the axle that's uh, uh, only on one side of the gear, obviously that's going to be flipped around. So you can, you have a choice. You can mirror that. When you mirror things, then you're going to have to reset the pivot because the pivot goes around with the, uh, with the mirror function. So uh, usually what I do on this is uh, instead of dealing with the mirror, is I'll just clone it and then uh, rotate the axle and the gear around and then reposition it by looking at the uh, location of the pivot on the other side and, uh, and not mess with the mirror function because that gets you into pivot issues and sometimes that can be a pain in the butt. wouldn't be bad on this one but on the more complicated ones uh, it, it may. So that's uh, how you would go, go about doing that. And uh, let's see, right gear upper, let's just move this off so you can see. Now, <clears throat> like I said, everything here is the same on the left and right except for the axle and the wheel. So <clears throat> it's already cloned, so we can just, well, we want to rotate based on, before we rotate it though, let's center that pivot line it to world on that axle and then uh, when we rotate it if I can find the vertical areas so we rotate it 180 degrees I can get it down to 180 here and then we'd have to reposition it of course And then we would note the position on the other side, making sure that its pivot was also centered. <clears throat> and then just copy that position for this side without the minus sign. Left side gets to minus, right side doesn't. So that's basically what you do. So you end up then with a, essentially a mirrored pair. We didn't have to mirror the, the center stack here, just the wheel and the axle. So And rotate it around. <clears throat> Excuse me. So that's what you end up with. <clears throat> nice power gear there. And uh, be ready to then to position them <clears throat> under the booms. And, and uh, the next step, of course, would be to rotate these up. We'll have to rotate this lower portion of these uh, two main gears. And... Uh, so that they sit nearly flat within that, uh, within those booms, and we'll catch that when we get back into uh, uh, reshaping the boom to accommodate storing these this gear in it. So that'll be coming up. <clears throat> okay, guys. I hope this was instructional. I hope it worked for you. Hope you learned something. I think now you're ready to build some gear, and uh, you know, we're moving forward. So thanks for joining. Comment below if you would like, and uh, I'll see you back on the next video. Thanks.